What's up guys? Vlog's a little bit different today. Um, this is a lot of talking, walking you through step by step on the measurements for fitting furniture in, into your spaces um, and then also a little bit additional job site organization. Uh, let me know in the comments if this is something that's useful to you and I'll try and do more of them in the future. Uh, as for the stone house, making a ton of progress. We are in the finishes. Sheetrock is up. Primer is on the walls, floors are going down. We are getting into all the super fun stuff now, so a lot more to come. All right, what's up everybody? Um, so nobody on site today, I'm um, getting a bunch of measurements done and I thought this would be really helpful to share. So I am measuring out to figure out the size of the dining table that I'm gonna be able to fit in my dining room. And I know a lot of people have questions when it comes to how much room do we leave for chairs? What's the appropriate size for a room? So I figured I'd take you through my measurement and thought process and, uh, and hopefully make this process a little bit easier for you. All right, so let's just jump right into it. Um, got my kitchen plan here from Cabinet Designers. I've already totaled up, totaled up my measurements, so I know from the back kitchen wall to the front edge of the overhang of the countertop, I've got 15 foot, three and a half inches. Now, you guys know that I'm a big fan of blue tape. You know I'm a big fan of spray paint. I'm out of spray paint right now, and it's absolutely freezing in here. So tape is really not gonna cut it, not to mention the amount of dust. Uh, I found an old paintbrush. So these are gonna be my table markers. This is gonna be, and the kitchen marker. So whatever you can find that works for you. The countertop overhang goes 12 inches beyond the cabinet because I want this to be a sit at peninsula. That said, when you're calculating that three feet of backup space for your chair that's gonna be at your dining table, I go from the furthest point of any obstruction. So that countertop overhang would be the mark that you wanna make. So what I like to do is take my total measurement. So I've got 15 foot one inch of clear space from the edge of that step to the edge of my countertop overhang. I'm gonna call it 15 feet for easy math because we don't have to be down to the inch with this thing. Now, if we simply went three feet and three feet, handy markers here, we've got 15, 14, 13, 12, one, two, three, and then we've got one, two, three, here's my 36. So I will tell you right off the bat, in this particular circumstance, this is too close for me. Um, I'm gonna have stools underneath the overhang. I want people to move about the kitchen. I know I'm gonna have a lot of people over. So you wanna maximize your dining room table space, but if that table's too big, can people function in the space well? So these are the things we're trying to balance here. Um, and three feet certainly feels too slim a margin here, being as number one, I don't want anybody getting hurt, and number two, this is the main and only thoroughfare that goes into the living room area. And while it's a very nice and wide step, a massive dining table will cut that down substantially. So now I'm leaving four inches, four feet of space on the stair side, four feet of space on the kitchen side. And now I'm looking at a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven foot table. How do we know if this works for us? Best rule of thumb here, two feet of space equals one person. We're at seven feet here. That means I can get three people aside with an extra foot of space. That extra foot means that those people at the ends are going to have enough room for their place settings and everything should fit really nice and comfortably. So a seven foot table in length feels very much like the right dimension to use. So that's three feet off of that wall. That's three feet off of that wall. Yeah, so that's a nice wide, wide table. In my mind, this side of the table 
because there's the exterior wall of the house, there's gonna be way less traffic coming around. So I think I'm gonna keep this to the three foot and this we're gonna cheat out as far as possible or to our desired table width, which is 40 inches because people are gonna be coming from down, from upstairs, people are gonna be coming from the master bedroom, from the powder room, from the kitchen and walking down this way right here to get to the living room. Yes, it is still difficult to visualize, even for me. And what I'm looking at really is like edge of wall here to edge of table here. Like, yes, I took the measurement. Yes, I know the measurement is good, but how does it feel, right? So much of space is feel. There's a lot of open space. There's a lot of negative space around a table. And being that it's about hip high or 30 inches off the ground, your eye line is not gonna see it as this big monstrosity of a thing in the space. It's going to feel very fluid in the sense that it's not gonna feel like it's blocking the space as much as you may think it will be. I feel like this is plenty of room to get through, knowing that I wanna be able to sit eight people at this table at any given time, and that meals are gonna be a big focus of this house. This feels really great. We've got the outdoor kitchen going right out here, on the other side of that picture window, that will be a 16 foot wide renewal by Anderson double slider. I feel like we have plenty of room to get by on this side. The three feet feels good on this side to get a chair out, to get a person in. Those are all my thoughts. Again, hope it was helpful. Lots of good luck making the choice. Oh, it's a cold one today, super cold. So back up, back in it. What I did recently, I don't have enough hands to do this without putting stuff down, was put a whole bunch of these pouches together. Now, I know I've said in the past that I put a job Bible together, so everything is in one place. What I found with that is it's one binder and guys pull it to different rooms and nobody knows where it is. So what I did is I went on Amazon and I ordered these job work order sheets. And they have little grommets at the top, just a plastic sleeve. So this one is for the kitchen and it's got plans, Kohler cut sheets, and the GE Cafe appliances cut sheets. I'm gonna screw these to the wall and I'm using a screw that has a big enough head that the guys can't pull this thing off the wall. They can take sheets out if they need to, but I'm hoping that that is enough to keep it in place and keep all the documents together on a room by room basis. So I'm basically gonna walk through the house and screw up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different rooms worth of stuff. So I've got kitchen, I've got bar, I've got laundry, powder room, master bathroom, master bedroom, and the two bathrooms upstairs. Uh, other thing I'm doing today, I'm gonna verify fixture counts. Everything has an extended lead time with the pandemic. Supply chains are screwed, so I'm really going above and beyond what I would normally do from a lead time perspective and getting absolutely everything done. Um, good example of that, I'm doing a custom range hood right here over that beautiful 48 inch cooktop. A custom fabricated metal hood, add the pandemic, these guys are at an 11 week lead time. I looked at my construction schedule, that means if I place that order today, it's going to be ready just about the time I need it. So that is really pushing it. It's important to be on top of that and not take for granted that just because a whole bunch of things aren't going to be late, that there isn't one thing that's going to be late. Because remember, you miss one piece of this puzzle and it can screw you up, especially if it's in your critical path. So that's all the stuff we're doing from, um, let's say, uh, an administrative aspect right now. I'll screw these things to the wall. Then we're off and running on another week.